Good morning. This is Mrs. Sasek for Miss Overlander and Miss Sasek's history class. Today we're going to talk about differences in the North and the South. So make sure you have your notes out and follow along. Okay, so I originally had this as a classroom discussion, um, but I want you to think about over this past year, what are some of the differences you've noticed between the North and the South? If you think back to September when we talked about geography, you can think about how cold the North was and how the soil and the geography did not provide for um, a lot of big, large farmland, as well as um, lots of cities in there due to the climate and the way they had their um, deep harbor. So it was good for shipping and manufacturing. In the south, the climate was much warmer with uh, lots of flat land, making uh, farming a, a big part of the economy down there, lots of manual labor. So today we're going to talk about, uh, in four categories, how the north and the south differed in attitudes. First one being probably the most obvious is slavery. In the north, slavery was illegal. In the South, it was the foundation of the Southern economy because of all the plantations. Um, because of the Northern economy being lots of businesses and shipping, they did not uh, depend on a lot of manual labor, did not need um, slaves. It wasn't necessary. But in the South, states felt that they needed the slavery to keep up with the farming. As we talked about last week, abolition was a good thing. And we learned about several people who led the abolition movement to help uh, free the slaves. In the South, abolition would destroy the economy. That was the attitude, because there would be nobody who would be able to harvest in the farms. Here you see a cartoon. We talked about this last week and how slave families uh, were separated, often never uh, saw them again. Uh, the abuse, the torture, as well as um, how they had to work for life without payment. The culture in the north uh, was very urban, lots of cities. That's what urban means. And you uh, have many big cities, New York, Boston, Philadelphia. Here's a more modern map, but if you look uh, through from Boston to Philadelphia, and today that includes D.C., um, you see how there are lots of uh, pretty major cities, and even in between the major cities, there are some pretty medium-sized cities in between, like Providence, Hartford. Uh, New York's a huge uh, area, and it includes like Newark, uh, and then Philadelphia. And because of these cities, there are lots of opportunities for factories and businesses. Um, next year, you're going to be talking about workers' conditions and unions and the Industrial Revolution, um, which was great for our country. However, many um, workers were almost like slaves to the businesses. They were paid very um, low wages, worked in very unsafe conditions, unsanitary conditions. Uh, working 8 to 5 was unheard of, or 9 to 5, you often work at least a 12-hour day, six days a week. Um, no paid, no vacation time, no health care, all sorts of things. So you were, you know, even being in the North, you know, yeah, there was no slavery, but a lot of these workers were slaves to the factories. The South was very rural and agricultural, so lots of country, farmland. Um, because of this, there were very few cities with small villages and plantations, like the one you see here on the right, that was quite a common sight in the south. Um, and this was also quite a common sight. Most people working in the farms and plantations. So that includes slaves and um, people who are not slaves. You know, not every um, white person was a plantation owner, a slave owner. There were plenty of poor people in the south as well who were farm workers. So overall, very um, in the north and the south, a very hard life for a great majority of people. Okay, economy in the north again, factories, manufacturing, 
we see one of the factories uh, men uh, making rugs and carpets, uh, shoe making, uh, clothing, all sorts of things were made in the north. And the country is very dependent on the manufactured products in the north because that's where most of the factories were. That's not to say the south didn't have any factories. They had few, but um, the north was very industrial in that regard. Um, the north also favored tariffs. Tariffs are like taxes, and they were used to protect the owners and the workers in factories from um, businesses from other countries. You guys are like, what's well, a tariff, Miss Sassick? Well, we're going to talk about tariff. For now, think of it like a tax, and we'll talk more about it in about two seconds. The plantations and small farms in the south was uh, the big part of the economy. They grew cash crops like cotton, tobacco mostly, uh, and the Carolinas, it was rice and uh, indigo. They did not like tariffs. They did not want prices to increase because they were afraid that great people, countries like Great Britain, who were a big um, buyer of southern cotton, would stop buying cotton as a boycott, as a protest. Okay, now we're going to talk about tariffs. So go to the bottom of your page. You'll see tariff. I want you to write this. A tax to be paid on imports or exports. That's the definition of a tariff. So here's an example I got for you. The American Boot Company makes a very high quality boot. In order to make a profit and pay their workers, they have settled on a price of $30 a pair. Okay. Their competitions, the BBC, the British Boot Company, they make the same boots, high quality, very identical, but because the BBC's been around longer, uh, they're able to boots more efficiently, and they don't have to charge $30 a pair, they pay $20 a pay. Charge $20 a pair. So naturally, what boot would you pick? I would pick the British boot company. For $20. I like a good deal. Most people do. People shopping for boots will almost always go for the better deal. Um, so more people are going to buy the British boots more than the American boots. But people are going to stop buying the American boots because they're too expensive. And now the American boot company is going to have to fire workers or close down the factory altogether. Suddenly there's a lot of unemployed people who are wondering why no one's going to help them out. So this is where tariffs come in. To protect American businesses and jobs, the government passes tariffs on imports. Tariffs are the extra fees that are paid on imports. There are more fees that were passed on to the consumer. This led to more people buying American products and gave the government more income. So these were popular in the North because the factories and the companies started doing really well. In the South, however, people paid more money for their manufactured goods, so boots are $10 more expensive. You'll see why in a minute. Southerners were also worried uh, that Great Britain and other countries like them would stop uh, buying Southern cotton because they're not able to sell as many boots or any of their manufactured products. So underneath your tariff definition, I need you to write this. North likes tariffs, the South hates tariffs. So here's a little math problem for you. The original price of the British boot was $20. The U.S. government now charges $15 a tariff tax. Your new total is going to be $35 for BBC boots. Now what boots are you going to buy? Darn right, I'm going to, write, I'm going to buy American boots because they're $30. Bucks, and if I can save $5, I'm going to do it. They're the same boots. All right, our last issue on between the North and the South was the Constitution. Still not getting away from government, guys. Strong central government protected from the states. That's what the North liked. And they believed that national laws were good for everybody. So that's what they wanted. Strong Uncle Sam protecting everybody for the states. In the South, however, they had a different attitude. They believe states should have the power to make their own decisions, like states' rights. And they believe that the states knew what was best for each other, kind of like the Articles of Confederation of the states that have some more power. 
They also believe that states should nullify or declare illegal any national law they disagree with. This is a violation of Article 6 in the Constitution. Supremacy Clause, meaning the Constitution is the highest law of the land. That's going to be a problem. And we're going to talk more about how this is a problem next class. All right, bring your questions, rewind, and we will see you then.